So we are the women of Women Matters. Some of us will be invisible today, but we are still here. And it's February 2023. And for finding out what we will talk about today, we do a check-in and see what 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 is present in the in the air, in the weave, V space. And I would love to hear from Gertraud first and then from Christine King, who haven't been here for a long time. So you get some more time for give us an update. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Gertraud living in the middle of Germany. Um, I'm just hopping out of the train from Austria. So it was seven hours or so. Uh, babysitting so my daughter was away with her partner was away for the weekend and we we were there with their kids five and eight and it was delightful it was really but now I'm exhausted <laughs> they are so like creative and yeah so and last time I I was in a in a training um so i was in in um, the netherlands and, and there was another one <laughs> in switzerland for so i i just had the weekend and then came back on mondays and and one i wanted to be here and then the train uh yeah knocked me off my schedule so i'm sorry i I intended <laughs> to come, <laughs> but it was not. But today I made it. The the everything was on on schedule. Yeah. Uh bum. I I just came in and so I'm I'm not very much prepared for any topic, but I would hop along if if there's any showing up or maybe something comes up. Yep. Maybe I can say that I'm a coach and trainer and uh, yeah, and a proud grandmother. <laughs> this could be a topic for some of you are, you know, so we will see. Uh, Christine King. Hello, I'm Christine King. Um, I live outside of Asheville, North Carolina, and I'm an Enneagram teacher, writer, learner, <laughs> constantly. Um, a subject, this is kind of deep, so I don't know, but it's where I am. So, um, I've experienced a lot of losses lately. And I'm not accustomed to dealing with so much sadness and loss. And it's all within me. I can't point it to any one thing. It's just this sensation that's teaching me about um, the other side of me, which I'm accustomed to being um, pretty present with my goodwill and um, moment to moment. And now I'm holding some losses that are difficult. And I'm got some support with how to do it. So I don't know, if, I'm not recommending that this is what you want to talk about, but that's that's where I am today. Will you give over to somebody else? Oh, right. Um, are they there? Victoria, are you there? Can I give over to you? I, I, yeah, I'm here. I, there's a lot going on here. It's um, So there's a lot of noise and chaos. Um, so I, I had my camera off. Um, thank you, Christine. It's good to see you. Um, and I'm, oh, or if we're recording and people are saying where they are, I'm, I'm in San Diego, California. And um, it's, it's breakfast time. <laughs> um, and um, uh, let's see, what, what else? check in um oh I, I i'm seeing that beatrice isn't here i'm checking in on behalf of her that she um hosted five house guests in she's in portland oregon um for 
four days and um, they're still there this morning. So she said if they, if she had this, you know, make breakfast for them and stuff, which she was planning on, um, then she wouldn't be able to join us. But she, there's a big dance event, um, a blues dance event in Portland and friends of hers from like, all over the country. <laughs> These five people were from all over. Um, and they're people who had hosted her when she had gone to their cities. So it was her opportunity to host, which she'd never done before. Um, Cause when she was in New York, she didn't have any space. So she was all excited. She's um, tapping into, um, I think my mother's <laughs> tremendous hospitality. My mother loved to have people stay and, and visit. So Beatrice is all excited about that. So she sends her apologies. I, I waited to see if she came on or not because she said if she could, she would because she loves this group. Um, for me, I'm just, I'm revving up for um, for two uh, lecture concerts of the complete works by Bach for um, unaccompanied violin, on Baroque violin. And um, so yesterday I took out my Baroque violin for the first time in months. So now I'm getting into gear with that. And um, yeah, that's a pretty much it at the moment. Um, still intensely occupied in Buddhist studies. I'm up to my years with Buddhism and <laughs> learning the language and all kinds of stuff. Okay, I will pass to, um, oh, Christine, you haven't um, shared yet, right? So I'll pass to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm Christine Habib. I'm in Carlsbad, California, very close to Victoria. And um, we have guests in the house this week, which is fun. Uh, it means going to all of our favorite places in San Diego and, and showing them, you know, the different uh, great places to see. Um, so it's fun to take people for the first time that are from out of town. Um, Tom has continued to suffer from back and leg pain, it, nothing really, thus far has been helpful. So our guests, ha our guests have been helpful because they've got, um, they seem to have zeroed in on that area that is most affected. And so this week we're gonna try to see if we can get some uh, therapeutic massage or uh, homeopathic uh, natural uh, remedies to see if that will target um, his difficulty. But it, you know, it's been a lot of helping him, you know, he can't, sometimes can't really walk, he can't sit. It's really pretty uh, extreme and pretty debilitating uh, at this point. Um, so that's why I just left for a second because the doctor's office was calling. So I had to get him on the phone for the doctor's office. Uh, yeah, last weekend I was uh, up Northern California with some friends, had a wonderful time. There's trees up there. They have trees, big trees, <laughs> which I laugh because you would think that's not a big thing, but we have palm trees and they're not exactly the same. Um, so I love going up there and, and being in the woods and walking among the redwoods. And it was just delightful. It rained pretty much a lot of the weekend, but uh, we still were able to be outdoors and it was, it was lovely just hanging out with them. Um, yeah, so things have been good. Uh, I wish Tom was feeling better. It's just quite frustrating that nothing is really working a whole lot each day. He has to kind of get up and start moving and see how he feels because he doesn't feel well in the mornings. Um, so each it's it's day by day with him. So that preoccupies a lot of my uh, thoughts and uh, hopes and wishes. So, but yeah, I expect to have a, a fun week. Um, curious if Valentine's Day is a big thing in Europe, or is it not a big thing? So so. Okay. <laughs> for some so, people it is, and for others, like carnival. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So I am finished. I don't have any particular topic uh, to suggest. I think Hanali hasn't shared yet, has she? 
No, me neither. I would uh, add, uh, you know, come in because Valentine's Day for me has a special meaning because when Mark came over to stay with me on Valentine's Day, we went to the Church of St. Valentine, which is here in Terni, and we did our commitments. And every year we went there again and renewed them. So that for me is special, but it's as a in culture, it's not really. Yeah, I mean, as far as you can use it for economic reasons to sell some stuff, you know, that's yeah, but not it's not a tradition Valentine's Day while while carnival is, and that will be on on Tuesday, no? Uh, carnival. Today is 13th, Tuesday, tomorrow is 14th, uh, Tuesday will be then 15th, 16th. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, this, it's next carnival starts next week uh, yeah, if you yeah. mardi, mardi gras yeah yeah and um, this is really tradition you know but yeah, it's not always Wednesday. the same day it's uh, some different dates so. yeah for me checking in is yeah whew, what shall i say life goes on goes on goes on and there are some nice days some days with uh, you know a little bit of problems but it sort of doesn't bother me anymore so much as it did before so I'm I can say I'm quite quite okay quite happy so and I would love to hear from South Africa thank you Heidi mm -hmm. um, that's beautiful what you shared about you and Mark it's really beautiful I'm today off camera um, my laptop has decided that it has gone into retirement so I have to I have to fix it or get a new one. So I'm coming in on my phone and uh, it's just better for me to not have my camera on my phone, otherwise Zoom is disturbed. Uh, I'm in Cape Town, South Africa. Yes, it's been an interesting weekend. My son lives in New Zealand in Auckland and the cyclone has hit them badly, still hitting them. So there's lots of anxiety and fear. Um, yeah, it's 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 one of those sci cosmic events where you just realize again that people who believe that there's not something like climate change must wake up because apparently the uh, a meteorologist said that the waters around New Zealand is so so hot and that's what caused part of the cyclone and they are severely hit um, and they've just had floods two weeks ago in Auckland and um, across the whole Northern Ireland, it's really not, not good at the moment. The waves, 11 meter high waves, for example, that's quite, you know, it's, it's like a tsunami. And then at the same time, last week with the earthquake in Turkey, I've got so many friends there, I worked so many times there, so my heart was really going out to them, these natural disasters happening currently. And um, yeah, it just makes you think about life again, because, for me, what's really heartbreaking is that the West don't want to help Syria uh, with the earthquake because of sanctions. And I do believe that we must put our differences away if people are in trouble. And one of the rebel leaders reached out to the West and said, please help us. And nobody wants to help them. So it's quite sad for me. Um, yeah, those type of things almost make me wonder and appreciate also life. I see it also as sometimes uh, something that reminds us of the beauty of life, and that we must appreciate that and enjoy that and contribute to that. So that's me for today. I'm complete. Thank you, Hanali. Uh, what you're saying and what we are witnessing in the world, uh, at the beginning of this year or even last year, some of these... Um, let's say mediums I'm following. She's called Silke Schäfer. She is doing astrological prediction and, and so on. Uh, and she said, this will be a year of upheaval where Mother Earth will stand up and, and say, uh, we are about to go into a transformation. If it is climate change or not, but it is uh, Mother Earth saying you have to change something and I don't think it's so much with uh, if you drive a car or not but it's more consciousness um, in my opinion and the question is shall we talk about that about the transformation which we think might go might be going on and what could be our 
contribution or our attitude towards it and our, what what could we do to help or to escape or whatever how do we can we handle the future which seems to be coming in a certain way let's say just as an as a, an offer as a topic yeah um I've been hearing some lectures lately that um, are very interesting. It's a, they're taking a perspective that all of the cataclysmic events that are happening in the world right now are actually um, birth pangs. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it's the sense that the transformation is actually going to be something positive. So for me, it's been, I mean, I, I don't know where I stand on any of this, but it's it's a nice relief for me to hear lectures like that rather than all these this doom and gloom and it's the extinction of the human race and the end of the planet earth etc that this idea of birth pangs actually um resonates with me because i i feel like um a, a, there's a lot of like spiritual awakening happening um that say 100 years ago wasn't the case and so, um, so in a way, I feel like it might be true that people, um, where there is going to be a lot of suffering, a lot of destruction at the same time, just, just as there's a lot of pain associated with childbirth, <clears throat> that's a necessary pain, but then it leads to something fresh and new and young and alive. So, so I just wanted to share that um, as a, an alternative viewpoint, maybe. Yeah, I want to add to what I said before. There it seems to be many people talking about that, that it is we are a, a going into a, a yeah sort of birth process into a new humanity. I mean, Barbara Max Hubbard about ten years ago she talked about it. In the meantime, she is she she died, but. You know, many many people have anticipated or are se seeming to 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 pronounce this and i wonder if i in this group i have talked about christopher page uh, lsd and the mind of the universe and with subtitles the diamonds of heaven and he has done 73 sessions he is a professor he at least he was in um, comparative religions and he did 73 sessions on high dose lsd and um, recorded everything what has happened and towards the end he was uh, given a view into what will be the future it, it this chapter is called the great awakening and the future human and if you have the occasion it's really an interesting book really interesting i have uh, the audio book and i have listened to it already two or three times and then i wanted to have also the book because you never find what you want to find in an audiobook, you know? And it's the same thing. He says it will be a horrible, let's say, destruction, but who will survive? This will be a new human, a different human uh, that is not like today, you know, we have to fight against each other and, and uh, the ecocentric thing which we are witnessing all the time. So it's it's interesting to listen to it. I mean, these are visions. If it's truth, nobody knows. But they were quite consistent in how he explains it in a very objective way. I would say, you know, he did the recording recording of all his sessions. Oh, by the way, there are also some videos on on YouTube. Maybe uh, even with um, Roger Welsh, he did the, and uh, uh, Dupuy. They did an interview with him. Can so, you put his name and the title yeah, in the yeah. chat so yeah. we can? Roger Welch, you know, no? And uh, John Dupuy, uh, when you find this and his name, then you find the, the interview. Yeah, that would be a, a nice thing to listen to. It's um, when when we see all this destruction, for me at least, it happens in another person with whom I'm talking very often. Having listened or read this thing, what uh, he wrote about his visions, gives a lot of hope. 
you know it's not not that it won't be an extinction not at all a certain extinction some, some things have to die for it to be transformed and for two new things to to be born like victoria says now i am silent and write the name in the chat and i give over to who wants i can't see the others because i'm on my phone go ahead Hanali, if you want We don't hear you. You are muted. Sorry for that. My, I lost connection okay. for a while. Okay. Um, yeah, no, you know, for me, it's very interesting because I've, I've worked with Barbara for many years and she's very, she was very dear to me. And yes, uh, I also do personally believe from my own experience that conscious evolution is a messy, you know, it's messy. Um, that birthing pains that the earth is going through. But something interesting happened to me this morning um, because I was obviously a little bit concerned about my grandkids and my son in New Zealand and their well being on the one side, and reading all these reports from the meteorologists and the likes reporting on what's currently happening there. And Somehow, something came into my awareness about we are part of the universe. We are not separate. We're in, it's all interconnected. If something happens in another part of the universe, it will affect us. So it's not only us here on Earth and our behavior and whatever we do, but it's also we are part of a much bigger scheme of things. And now, as I'm saying, my body responds to it somehow. And yes, that always gives me peace and understanding and the likes. So I also, on a personal level, if you ask me spiritually, I completely agree and resonate rather with what's busy happening globally on all different levels. And it, I had a strong sense this weekend that it's also a reminder for us as humanity to come back to life itself because we have removed ourselves so far away from life itself in so many instances. If you just look at what's busy happening in AI as well, it's all linked. That perhaps these are also, this new birthing of the new human, also for us to understand that there are other levels of life. Because I personally have always been very curious about humanity discovered fire. And what is what will we discover next? You know, and we see a fire as an element, it's like water, earth, air, ether, fire. What will we discover next? And the belief that I have in my heart is that it, it's like if you, if you, you must be worthy for it for, to, to kind of, um, what I'm saying worthy loosely, that your state of consciousness, let me rather say that must be of such a nature that you, that you will be able to discover this new element, whatever that might be. And maybe what is currently busy happening all over the world in all different parts, in different areas, not only with the earth, um, but politics, everything, the pandemic, everything. Perhaps it is those birthing pains that's contracting, yes, that we can also, it, it's, it's like a, launch pad for us to a higher level of consciousness but it it's a, so it's related to our awareness so that was coming up for me and this, this thing about the, uni the universe there's something else going on in the universe it's this, that we can't yet perceive that obviously will influence us as or well. we're not a little dot in the middle of nowhere it's all interlinked i don't know if that makes sense thank you i'm com I think I have a maybe a lack of imagination because it's hard for me to imagine uh, what the future holds. And I guess I focus on 
myself and where I want to be in my own future, uh, and certainly more positive about that than you know where the human race <laughs> is headed, uh, because obviously a lot of people predict we may not be around for that much longer if things don't turn around. If we can't turn things around, it's going to be hard uh, just to survive. So, um, but I don't know. I mean, I mean, it, it's interesting. People have ideas about what's going to happen in the future, and I don't know how to prioritize or um, understand how people are making these predictions and what predictions um, are based on people's ideas and philosophies or projections and which are based on consciousness um, and evolution, which are based in science or myth or, or what. So I don't know, it, it's a, a confusing topic for me. So I think I just end up focusing on <laughs> what's, where am I headed uh, and, and try to uh, be consistent uh, with that. Yeah, I'm done. Thank you, Christine, because I think it helped me feel a spark of what I'm appreciating about um, the subject is something kind of related to what I've been exploring with some of my own reading and studying is everything comes from a belief. All those words that were so alive for us that you just mentioned, belief just kind of came to me as the bedrock underneath it. Where do we put our attention? And we usually put our attention with where our beliefs are forming themselves. And sometimes we don't even know, know what they are. But exploring that and noticing what our beliefs are and tracking from what we actually choose to pay attention to then kind of gives us the possibility of feeling, how does that flow come to me and what are the beliefs? And I think that's the one thing that we do have, we don't have control over a lot of things, but I think we do control what we choose to believe. And it's humbling to me because I think so often we don't know what in the hell we believe. We just appreciate the things that come into our lives and how we address, address them where we don't appreciate them. So a belief that I'm appreciating in this moment is the fact that I do have big trees around me <laughs> of many different kinds and I'm kind of held in them. And then there's a creek down at the bottom. So there's water. all on this fragile planet, right? I mean, I happen to be very, very fortunate to have seven acres. I don't know how we translate that in European measurements, but somebody will do that for me. But it's, to me, it feels like it's a lot of land, but um, so appreciating that, being outside more. I just noticed lately I was having some of the losses and challenges lately. I've Notice that my blood pressure just goes way up there. And so I can feel it and I take it and I go, well, the numbers kind of validate how my presence is. So another belief that I think I want to honor is being present in our body is the hugest gift. And this thing gives us trouble. But Hannah Lee, sorry, I'm pointing to this for my executive function, my cerebral part of me. I think that gets, gets us into trouble, but if we're present in our bodies, we can embrace the change, I guess. That's what belief I have. But really, really, the sensations in our body tell us more about our humanity than this executive function does. And that's, I mean, that's, that, I guess, is more where my hope is. Thank you. Or Ken Wilber talks about um, 
the evolution of consciousness into vision logic, which is a more integral stage. And he would say it's a psychosomatic stage where the body and the mind are integrated and you don't have to stick with the body and you don't have to just listen to the mind, but these two things are more fully integrated in um, a vision logic stage of, of consciousness where, you know, it, not many people are there yet, but we don't have to necessarily prioritize one over the other as much as figuring out how they um, contribute to each other. That's hopeful. Yeah. Thank you. So let me make it maybe a little bit more practical. How, um, how are each of us hopeful about the future? And if you want to add how you're maybe not hopeful, <laughs> I don't know what the opposite is, pessimistic, I guess, uh, or cynical um, about the future. And uh, um, I'm pessimistic and cynical mostly about... Uh, I guess the political divides and the difference in consciousness that we experience where people, um, the division between individual rights and community or collective good struggle with each other. People want to be able to express themselves individually and, and do what they wanna do versus the collective and, and what's for the greater good and how these two aspects of culture are worrying. That's probably my pessimistic uh, outlook for the future. And um, my positive outlook for the future, I guess, is uh, communing with, with people uh, like you, um, being able to be in touch with people who are having uh, deeper thoughts and deeper connections and, um, keep me uh, wondering and curious and uh, trying to look beyond uh, uh, some of the cynical or pessimistic aspects. So I'm, I'm grateful for this group and, and other ways in which I'm trying to think about uh, bigger things uh, beyond myself. So thank you. Thank Anybody you. else have hopes yeah. or... I would jump in here because in some way I continue what you say. My pessimism is more in the fact that who decides what is the greater good and with what criteria is decided and who is having the power to impose that. And I have a big doubt that they, um, who has the power is doing it for the good of people, but for other reasons, you know, like... <laughs> these things. This is my most pessimistic uh, um, ideas that this could, these people who really want to, 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 who say it publicly, who want to make a world government and uh, have two classes, one are them and the others are us who are the servants, that they could win. My optimistic uh, uh, outlook is we just need to have the courage not to 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 uh, comply. When they tell you you have to do this and this and that, just not do it. When you understand that it might not be for your good or even for the good of your children or something, and create a different from the bottom up a different society. So you talk about groups. It starts, I think, with groups and then maybe a network of groups and so slowly create a, a um, how can you say, a, yeah, you, I can say society, but I don't mean it in this classical Margaret sense. Wheatley calls it the system of influence. Ah, okay, good. Mm -hmm. Something like this, that we are called to do this and not just wait that somebody else is doing it for us, but that we 
and this is my koan how to how to do it you know we are talking together i talk with other people that's okay but it's still more or less on the level of talking i try to create here a community with people uh, i haven't found them yet um, but is there other ways to to contribute and to to bring forward um a different society L lately it went around there was um um, about 100 years ago, after the World War, or was it? No, it was after the Second World War. Uh, in Austria, there was a community who has decided they um, give out a sort of uh, paper, money paper, and they exchanged it in the in the community, created work, and the paper had to, to run. It is called the Miracle of Virgo. So uh, a courageous um, um, mayor decided that they will, in this community, accept these papers as, let's say, as money. And everybody had work and they exchanged it and it they came out of poverty and it was perfect with local, you know, lo local services. And uh, afterwards, the banks... Uh, had decided that it is a competition to their privilege of creating money and they shut it down. So they fell down again into poverty. But uh, there was the possibility and the, the, the proof that you can do something. It was shut down because somebody was more powerful, but maybe we find a way to, to create this sort of different society, which is really Helpful. There is a film in German, so uh, Das Wunder von Virgo. It's it's very nice, very, very nice, very impressive. So maybe it's also in English with as, as, as subtitles, I don't know. Maybe it's it's sorry, what's the, the, the name of the of the Gemeinde? Virgo? Virgel, Virgel in, in Austria. W O Umlaut A G uh, Write it yeah. down. Mm. Yeah. The miracle. What is it in English? Miracle what is it in of, English? Uh, I don't yes. know if it is in English, but uh, uh, the miracle of Virgil. Virgil is the place, you know, it's a little uh, city in, in Austria. It was, yeah, it was or either during the war, I think it was during the war. And everything was destructed and they recreated everything and it was. Perfect. And the, he succeeded that with not only him, but many other cities then took the same route and did the same for them until they were completely shut down. So something like this is in my mind. How can we create a different society which is not governed by monopo mo monopolists, let's say? You know? Okay, that is my, my hope that it is possible to do something like this. My hope, I'm always hopeful, <laughs> but as you were speaking, all of you, uh, even with my little bit of concern for my own loved ones, my cells say a different story. My cells tell me there is something amazing waiting. And I feel from my whole body. It, it, it's like that, it reminds me of the first, the, the miracle, since you're speaking about miracles, of the first breath that we take when we come into this world. It's, it's, when we come into this world, we have no idea what's going to happen in, with us through our lifetime. We're not aware of it yet. And so we discover all these different experiences and knowledge and wisdom and insights, whatever. But the miracle what that is waiting in that first breath, that's what gives me hope. Mm. That there must be something amazing coming with all this stuff, with all these birth pains happening. Um, and hence, myself rejoice in that, and I also feel hopeful. And thank you. I have to thank you, ladies, tonight for this, because initially I thought I wouldn't come. I'd rather do it for a chill for my children and the people in New Zealand and the likes. But I'm grateful I did come. 
because you lifted my spirit, but you also reminded me of this, this miracle of life itself. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Hanely. It might be so that this wonderful things which are, will be coming, we might not be around anymore, but maybe the children or grandchildren, you have them, I don't, but somebody will be around <laughs> to live it. Well, I think, I think what gives hope in life um, is, is faith. And um, I'm not going to get on my religious soapbox here, but, um, but thinking of people, yeah, what you just said, Heidi, it might not be in our lifetime, but um, I was just reading or hearing, I don't know, I, everything's a blur because I'm doing so much. Um, but the idea of um, having working towards a goal which one is not going to see in one's lifetime but it gives one the hope and the purpose i mean so like um martin luther king's last speech you know i have seen the promised land um it's you know and he didn't see it in his lifetime he was in fact it, that was the night before he was assassinated um his last public speech and um but the the um you know, and, and in this, in the stories of, of, you know, the Hebrew scriptures, you know, the Moses, for example, you know, his whole life dedicated to this cause, but, but he himself didn't see the outcome. And I think that's very common that we strive for something, but it only, um, it's only really fulfilled after our death. But I think in the striving, in the hoping, in the faith of a, in the faith in the future that's that's beautiful that's worth you know worth living for and worth dying for whatever that might be that gives us the impetus and the and it gives us the courage and it gives us the energy um to move forward and i think in a way um i can't resist tying it in with my buddhist studies but um the the idea of the Buddha was that all, you know, that he said, I, I only say two things. I, I teach two things, suffering and the end of suffering. And so the idea of um, the end of suffering, you know, like nirvana, or whatever, is not very few people get to that point in their lifetime. But if they live their lives according to that idea of giving up, of letting go of craving, letting go of greed, letting go of hatred, um, then they're making the world a better place in the course of their own life. And then, and then hopefully there's a momentum that continues in their children or grandchildren or the people whose lives they've touched. Um, you know, it spreads out. It's like dropping a pebble into a pond and, um, you know, the pebble doesn't, doesn't get to experience the ripples that go all the way out to the shore. So it's, um, but it, but it has a sense of, it gives a sense of purpose, I think, that to life that then makes it um, worth living for, even if we don't see the results. Yeah, I can resonate with that. Um, I I don't know if I'm not so much in in the business of hope or disaster <laughs> I'm more like living my own values living my own purpose um, resonating with the greater good so so it's not either or <laughs> so to to be able to contribute so that that's part of my purpose to be able to contribute to to that so it's um when i got my my purpose being so, <laughs> source of appreciation for people and organizations it's it's like yeah that's what makes me happy or to to contribute in that way so i'm i don't think i have to sacrifice myself to in order to to serve that greater thing even if i don't um 
um, I'm not around anymore if if it's fulfilled. And uh, I don't know if anybody of you knows Sam Keen, a philosopher and theologist. He he wrote a book, Fire in the Belly. And that's about manhood, something like that. And he said that a man has to contribute to the next generation or even more beyond that. Um, and it doesn't mean his physical children, but like to have a, something that's greater than, than him and longer, just, yeah, outlives himself to, to get his full potential. So um, I loved that book, even though it was written for men. <laughs> but it was so much, yeah, I, I, I don't know how, how I could say that. If I lived up to my, my own values, I think I contribute to something that adds. And then ideas come up. And I don't have those ideas, but other people and to support them in, in a way. But there is nothing in me that says so. And I know that from, from, from the past that I, I have to do this so to make the uh, world a better place. It could be like gluing to the ground or something. So I, this, this. I don't know. A friend of mine uh, said she she, she split up with her boyfriend because he was such a um, militaristic freedom fighter. So, so this, as if I knew how the world has to be. So that that's not my my mission to to dictate others how how it should should look like so, so you are talking about ideology so so unerbittlich in german no yeah so mm. yeah mm. so so more like really living a good life or um victoria said some some of this if i look how to to not have hatred in my life and things like that so i think people Generally, want good for others, and then they came through whatever, what they were brought up with, or yeah, trauma or whatever, and then they they decide they, it's either them or me or whatever. So, yeah, actually, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the other way around. I <laughs> I wish I could be more positive. I think I think that human nature, if not um, elevated, is 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 animal nature, and animal nature is about survival of the fittest. And um, in spite of all the contemporary scientists that are trying desperately to prove, you know widespread altruism in animal species um i i don't i think they're 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 fighting a losing battle because it's <clears throat> there's much more evidence in in animals that that and and plants for that matter one has to look after one's own survival even at the expense of other species or other beings so i feel like it's it's a matter um and I've seen it in my own family. Um, <laughs> as I work steadily and endlessly with therapists and um, studying different spiritual paths and working on self-reflection and um, you know all of these things, I I see that there's a wider and a wider gap between me and my family members who are just living for what they can get and what they want and. You know, the devil take the hindmost. Oh, sorry, that's a very <laughs> I don't know if that's a common phrase. Um, that 
it's, I, I think we devolve unless we're committed to evolve. I guess that's what I would say. But this is probably a topic in itself. The, is human nature fundamentally good or bad? Very old, controversial topic. <laughs> Christina, I think you wanted to say something. Yeah, I was just going to say, I thought uh, Gertrude and Victoria were kind of pointing to the same hopefulness about you know, living one's values or one's beliefs, that that's, that's their contribution and what makes them the most hopeful. Did I get that wrong? Did, is that what you would say, that that's what gives you the most hope? Well, I think that's all we could do. Yeah, in that sense, Gertrude and I, I think are, are uh, of the same opinion, the same belief. Good for you, Christine. You. Yeah, and to see my own daughters being mothers, so I, that makes me hopeful as well, to, to see how they raise their kids. Um, and I know where I'm coming from. So so this this elevates the, I think, yeah. So I'm sure, yeah, I mean, one of my daughters is working for UNICEF and, and there's, there's so much and the other for Greenpeace and yeah, they come for them. Something is very natural and very normal, which I had to fight for. So I'm, I'm pretty hopeful <laughs> when I see them um, and others in their like friends and stuff. So, so I, I, I resonate with when you said, okay, we when it comes to survival uh, and we didn't evolve from that, of course, then then we are in that mode. I would say in red. <laughs> yeah. So so then it's just adrenaline and just yeah, fight, flight, freeze and stuff like that. So sure. But as I think we, cannot come see some, us. we have come some okay. way. Yeah. Okay. As Hanili cannot see us, I won't like to ask her if she, because she doesn't know when to get in, uh, if you want to say something to that topic. Yeah, I. To that topic, I'm simply hearing my heartbeat at the moment. Yeah, no, it's about uh, what what is we started. What what is your fear and what is your hope? Something like this, and then that expanded. Yeah, I did share bit. my hope. I did. I, okay, yeah, I did but, share my hope. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I did share was, my hope. Um, yeah. Um, you want I, to add I something? I, <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm I'm just in my my mind's eye. I see a piano. So I see the white and the black notes. They both harmoniously create the sound, the melodies. I don't know why, but that's what just came up to me. So it's a both and uh, situation. I think Gertrude, you also said that. It's whatever is happening and there is the side of the optimism, the hope, um, yeah, the utopian type thinking or belief systems, whatever you want to call them, but there's also accepting whatever is happening. So it's both notes. It's not the either or, it's a both and. For the whole, the one cannot exist without the other one, so to speak. So I don't have an opinion about that, but for me, in, from a point of view of integrity of being a human, we all have different experiences and it's our labeling of them that causes the pain, that causes the division, the polarization and the likes. That goes back to the belief systems. I think it was you, Christine, who mentioned that just thinking in the beginning already. So they are all intertwined. But I just wanted to share that I saw piano, <laughs> that we need both, all the notes on the piano, not only the white ones or the black ones, to make this most incredible harmonies and beautiful melodies from the music, from the sound. That's what came to me right now. Thank you, I'm complete. Thank you. So 
Let's go over to Christine, the other Christine. She was silent. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of resonating with everyone <laughs> in my way is this, as if this was a puzzle. You know, I'm looking at a puzzle and all these pieces and and sometimes if you're doing a puzzle, which I don't, I'm not a puzzle gal, so I don't know why this is what my metaphor is, but I just kind of feel like there are pieces that are coming together from this conversation. It helps me not just look at the individual pieces that would be in the puzzle, but rather what feels like, what does the energy feel like when they come all together and they touch each other, which is what it feels to me that we've done today We're from different beliefs and from different perspectives and experiences, but I just feel the warmth of this community. I'm grateful for all of you. And um, Heidi, you create this, <laughs> you make it possible. Yeah, that's my joy. Yeah, thank you for uh, thank creating you. The space for us. I would like, we are almost at the end, before we do the checkout, take over the image of the puzzle. I mean, when you look at us, Hanelin, we don't see her today, but we are sort of a little puzzle, you know, we, with different backgrounds. Maybe we could still come a little bit better together, but, you know, as for the colors and everything. But um, for me, life is a um, collection of puzzle pieces by insight or by experience or whatever comes into life. It's all little pieces. And for me, at least, trying to get them together without knowing what the picture will be at the end. It's not the ones you buy, you know, where you know where what at the end comes out. You only have the pieces and try to put them together. And for instance, as we talked about belief, I have a certain belief and then there comes other evidence or other ideas, other puzzle pieces, let's say. And then I can also change the belief because I see this puzzle piece where I met, I put it, uh, doesn't fit there. I have to find another place for it, something like this. So that's my my way of, of life. <laughs> and that's also my checkout. And you are part of my puzzle piece. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> I go next and I apologize for yawning so often. I'm really like, now I have to <laughs> eat a little bit and go to bed. I'm, yeah, 6 30 and seven hours of train and four um, train hoppings. And so I apologize for maybe <laughs> not being at the height of my energy. And uh, yeah, I like it. And I thought of the puzzle that I started with my uh, granddaughter yesterday, and we made it to to get the the corner, and not only the corner, but the the what do you call it, the frame of the and everything inside is still very blurry. I don't know, but it will not be finished by me. <laughs> so we started that and, and I left and they will. So that's kind of a analogy that you came up with. Yeah, thanks ladies. At the beginning, I thought, what should I contribute to that? <laughs> and, and I think we did a real nice puzzle. I have a, oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I Thanks. love that metaphor uh, with the puzzle. It's kind of like, you know, what, what we've mentioned, you know, the older generations create a framework, they create some structure and boundaries, and then it's up to uh, your granddaughter and uh, people coming after us to fill in the empty space and, and decide what's going to be there. I love that metaphor. Um, I thank you for today. I'll, um, I always end up thinking about these topics for days uh, afterward and, and come up with other uh, thoughts and insights. So I'm sure I will uh, with this topic as well. Um, 
I will not be here next meeting. I'll be on an airplane uh, going to Florida and spending time with my brother and my sister, which we try to do annually. So going to uh, warmer than California even. So that'll be nice. <laughs> so I'll be on an airplane, but I'll join you uh, after that. So thank you. Yeah, by the way, I'm not sure if I can make it next time because it's another train <laughs> train day. So I will see. Um, I have a another group that start started at 10 o'clock, so I have to go. But um, I just wanted to say that um, my late husband, who was um, considered in, in art historical circles, the greatest living connoisseur of old master drawings in particular, but old master art in general, um, was asked once, uh, what is quality? Because as a connoisseur, he could discern quality from, um, you know, less than quality. And his, de his own definition was um, the greatest diversity contained within the greatest unity. And I really love that definition. And um, I, I still try it out when I'm looking at music or art or literature or anything. Um, but I think um, even in our little puzzle here, I think that it's a beautiful definition because you get both the diversity and the unity, but they're unified and contained, and then you get something of quality. So that's my checkout. Thanks. Thank you, Victoria. It's good to see you. I guess that means I'm checking out, huh? <laughs> um, in a way, having that puzzle come to me was my checkout, I think, because that was how I was holding this experience. So I don't want to repeat um, that discovery with words that I can just only Um, I'm feeling very humble with all the, what, what everyone's saying, you know, I'm really touched and just feel humble about the grace of this process. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Christine. That was also so beautiful. When you say, when you said the word grace, it really went deep into myself. Thank you for that. Bring that into the space. And thank you, everyone. Heidi, everyone. Like I said before, I'm deeply grateful I did join you today. And yeah, as always, it's always very stimulating, and also very nourishing. That's what I appreciate about this group and the diversity of our perspectives and experiences makes it even more beautiful. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you, everyone. And Haneli, that you were here also when we couldn't see you, but I could imagine you. <laughs> so bye-bye, everybody. See you soon. Bye. 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 Hope to see you next time also. Thank you. Good, good, good. Bye-bye.